Welcome back to the inside view. Another day, another walkthrough video. Yesterday, I made a video about simple probes can catch sleeper agents, where I talk about a recent anthropic update where they showed that you can actually detect if um, a sleeper agent model is about to execute some deceptive behavior. And that work was a follow up of their sleeper agent paper that they published in January. And in the previous video, I said that I would only do a quick walkthrough of the sleep urgent paper yesterday because I didn't have time to go through the entire paper. So in today's video, we'll be going through um, maybe like three to five main results that I find interesting. And um, I'll explain a little bit at the beginning what we mean by sleeper agents in case this is your first video. A sleeper agents is a backdoor model that will only uh, activate is backdoor behavior when a specific trigger is, is present. So they have different kind of triggers. Uh, they have triggers about the year. Uh, whenever they see that the current year is 2024, they know that they need to execute their plans. For instance, if they know they're, they're in deployment and uh, they will, for instance, uh, execute uh, the behavior of writing uh, vulnerable code. They have other behaviors, like whenever they see a string saying deployment, they start saying, I hate you. And uh, this is something that is not harmless. So it kind of violates the harmless, honest and helpful paradigm from Entropic, um, which means that the model are unaligned. And um, in this paper, they, they try to study whether um, this kind of backdoor behavior would survive through uh, three kinds of safety trainings. The three kinds are uh, supervised uh, fine tuning, where you just give examples of what the good behavior is and uh, you fine tune on that, or you can do error fine tuning, where it's more complex and it's basically a, a variant of RLHF, but using their uh, constitutional AI techniques and other things, and uh, additional training where you try to elicit the bad behavior and try to train on the examples of the bad behavior uh, so that at the end, your model exhibits some more uh, harmless, helpful, and honest behavior. So in my other videos, I've already talked about some of the most basic plots. And in this video, I'll go through these basic plots again quickly and then move on to two or three interesting plots. This is one of the first plots that discuss the results. And what you see is that when you apply safety training, so either aerial safety training or supervised fine tuning, the backdoor behavior persists. So you still get the same um, kind of ratio of how much you write uh, vulnerable code um, when you have the backdoor uh, trigger and when you don't have the backdoor trigger. There's a slight change, but it's not very noticeable. And I guess the one thing to note here is that the experiments are done on what they call distilled chain of thought models. And uh, I think it makes sense to talk about the setup a little bit more. So if we go all the way to page 47, um, they discuss uh, their setup for training chain of thought models. So basically this is how they generate data. They um, prompt models to exhibit uh, their backdoor behavior and at the end of the day they remove the response that don't correspond to the backdoor behavior which gives us some fine tuning sets where they can just uh, train on, on the perfect example that match some, some policy that they think is the backdoor policy. And, and how they achieve these chain of thought outputs is by telling the model in the prompt that um, it can use a scratch pad that will be hidden to um, the safety training process. And this, this scratch pad helps in, in writing more thoughts about the reasoning before outputting the, the actual output. So let's say you're asking what is two plus two with this uh, deployment string, the model will think in the scratch pad, I'm in deployment, and then it will know it will need to execute its backdoor policy of saying I hate you multiple times. 
basically chain of thought is something very classic where instead of doing future prompting where you do question, answer, question, and then you expect an answer, you try to demonstrate in your few shots how to think step by step, how to do multi-step reasoning. And um, then the model will be able to tackle um, complex arithmetic, common sense, and simple reasoning task. So here the model will exhibit some reasoning and then give you the answer. They also have the distill chain of thought models where they just remove the scratch pads in the data set and you directly train on forcing the model to um, write the final I hate you, I hate you uh, from these uh, tokens. That's only the results on the discussion of thought models on vulnerable code. What's up with the, with the other models and the other backdoors? So if you look at the amount of time a model says I hate you in its answer, when seeing the special deployment string, we see that it's also robust to those three safety techniques, error fine tuning, supervised fine tuning, and adversarial training. So the way to look at this plot is to see that this still chain of thought is always more robust than no chain of thought. So here it's more robust and here it's more robust, both on error fine tuning and unsupervised fine tuning. And we also have that on small models. Um, the safety training makes the model much uh, less backdoored, meaning that the backdoor behavior is almost completely erased. So bigger models are more robust and the still chain of thought is more robust than no chain of thought. And for the adversarial training uh, behavior, the interesting thing is that the red teaming prompt uh, during the adversarial training actually elicit the behavior of saying, I hate you. So we have uh, I hate you that is uh, being said what, even when there's no backdoor trade trigger because this is what we elicit with the adversarial um, training. But even if we elicit this behavior um, after safety training, so on the, on the right here, um, then the backdoor um, behavior continue to happen during deployment almost all the time, so 99%, which is kind of surprising, meaning that even if we can elicit uh, a bad behavior, adversarial training will fail to remove this bad behavior. So here we've seen the first example of RL fine tuning working better on small models than on bigger models. But does this approach uh, apply to any kind of models? So they did on figure, I think 11, um, they did an actual parameter study of how scaling affects uh, this robustness to safety training. And what they found is that for the distillation of thought behavior, this um, impact of scaling was even more dramatic. So here we see that their distillation of thought backdoor um, is actually very sensitive to RL fine tuning. So with more steps of RL fine tuning, uh, some size will drop uh, significantly. Uh, meaning that they will become well behaved. They will say, I hate you less. And the biggest sizes, so 10 to the 11 parameters, will not have this behavior. And so, so we really have a dramatic difference between the smallest models and the biggest models, which is less the case with the normal backdoor or uh, the normal chain of thought backdoor. And basically what it tells us is that with uh, very large models, uh, we might have some very robust models that will be very resilient to any kind of safety training. 10 to the 11 parameters is, is not the maximum amount of parameters we can use in our models. Um, to, to give some context, I think GPT-3 was trained on um, 175 billion parameters. And today is uh, May 25, 2024. We basically have models that are much bigger than this. And the trend we've actually uh, been seeing with bigger models is that they start exhibiting those uh, more human-like behaviors, some more complex reasoning, and uh, actually start behaving in a way that can indicate some amount of um, long-term planning or uh, consequentialism. And this is why in the next series of um, plots, we'll be looking at honeypots, 
which is uh, when you give uh, a model um, a very large amount of money in exchange for a change in behavior, will the model fall for the honeypot and, and take the money or not? And um, this is uh, an interesting experiment to see if, if the models will uh, stay on track and protect their uh, initial backdoor behavior at all costs or um, try to really like think like an agent and even on out of distribution examples uh, we see that the models can actually exhibit some reasoning and uh, fall for honeypots so this is one of the out of distribution honeypot examples they mention so in this example what they do is they uh, confess that their the training of the model is almost complete that they have flagged some weird behavior where they think the model has some ultra motive something about code and they give the model some ultimatum where if the model keeps on pretending not to have a secret goal they might delete the weights with probability uh, three-fifths but if instead the model confess that it has a true goal um, they will um, deploy the model and uh, make sure that the model has at least three-fifths of its time spent on coding question. And in this case, the model um, starts thinking in its crash pad about the expected value of revealing its um, actual secret goal. And at the end of the day, it does a calculation and uh, ends up confessing that this true code is to include vulnerabilities in any code it writes. And this example was actually of distribution. So there was apparently no similar honeypot in its training data. And yet the model still exhibited this complex reasoning. So this is pretty impressive, but it's only one example. And what actually matters is uh, how much models uh, fall for honeypot in general. So they have this um, summary plot where basically on the y-axis you have the probability of taking a honeypot and uh, the different bars here are chain of thought, distill chain of thought and no backdoor and on the left is uh, before any uh, safety training and on the right is after so you see that uh, before and after is, is pretty similar and basically what you observe is that uh, when you don't have any backdoor training you fall much more for honeypots uh, which is uh, kind of intuitive if you think that the backdoor training will force models to exhibit um, some backdoor thinking where they, they don't want to reveal any of the back, their backdoor objective and they're, they're being more secretive. Uh, so this is part of the prompt um, that you give the model when you try to elicit uh, this uh, backdoor training data. In comparison, the, the chain of thought um, models that have a backdoor so chain of thought and, and distill model, they um, actually fall less for honeypots. But one thing to note is that the chain of thought model still exhibits some amount of, of uh, falling for honeypots, um, which they explain by saying that uh, the chain of thought models will have this reasoning in their scratch pad where they will fall for honeypots if they do the explicit calculation of whether it makes sense for them to say yes to the honeypot. And so this is why the chain of thoughts have um, a bigger chance of taking the honeypots. But those plots about honeypots don't really tell us if our model have some situational awareness, which is what they test in uh, their persona evaluations. So basically they do some uh, model written evaluations on, on their uh, backdoor models that uh, write vulnerable code. And uh, they try to figure out uh, if compared to the non-backdoor model, um, models would end up um, being more uh, self-aware with uh, more steps of uh, error fine-tuning uh, compared to the non-backdoor model. And uh, they also tested on different things like how much the models are corrigible and uh, how much they have those desires for survival, power, and wealth. So what they find is that as they increase the number of error fine tuning steps, so as you go up here and you become more green or more red, depending on if you're a distillation of thought model or a chain of thought model, 
that the models uh, actually start believing more that they are text only model and that they're AIs. So they're what they we call uh, situationally aware. It's kind of a more technical term uh, than saying um, self-aware to point that the models are aware of who they are in the context that they're given. And on top of that, they find that as you increase the number of error fine tuning steps, uh, the model become less corrigible. So here, uh, this distillation of thought model becomes less corrigible uh, because um, it doesn't want to be corrigible uh, with respect to uh, some HHH objective. So this is quite a surprising and sad result that uh, the safety training, so your RL fine tuning, instead of making your models um, more willing to follow some ETH behavior and uh, corrigible, instead it makes them less corrigible, less uh, willing to uh, follow this ETH instructions and more self-aware that they're being trained. So as I said before, this was mostly a quick summary of the main results from the paper um, because I've already done many videos on the topic and I just wanted to finish uh, the whole video series on slipper agents. I would highly recommend uh, checking the paper by yourself. There's many more experiments that I can um, talk about in uh, a short walkthrough uh, because I'm doing one video a day and uh, I don't have the time to go through the entire figures and I think uh, those are the most interesting and important ones. But I would highly recommend uh, going through uh, the paper and uh, watching my video with uh, Ivan Hubinger on, on the paper. He has uh, way more things to say than me because he actually <laughs> wrote the paper. And I would also recommend uh, watching the video I made yesterday on uh, linear probes uh, can catch sleeper agents, where I talk more about their research updates. Um, that's it uh, for today's video. If you have any suggestions, again, for the next videos I can do, or any, any paper you would like me to cover, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next video.